So you know how to find the gravitational force of attraction between two masses. Suppose we have a mass m and then we have another mass little m1 and we know that the force that the big M feels due to little m1 is attractive and I'll call that one f1. But what if I have more than one mass? What if there's also a mass 2 that would have a force f2 and a mass 3 that would have a force f3? Then what do you do? Well, turns out you just add them up. F net, the net force, that's the sum of all the forces, is just F1 plus F2 plus F3. So the net gravitational force on an object is equal to the sum of the individual gravitational forces. That would mean that F net would be equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3, all the way up to, say, Fn, if we have n different objects. A cleaner way of writing this would be to use summation notation. So I could say that f net equals the sum from i equals 1 up to n of all the individual fi's. But since forces are vectors, you have to add them as vectors. So what do I mean by that? If I have a mass m and then I have a mass little m1 and a mass little m2, I can look at the forces on big M there will be an attractive force from mass 1 and an attractive force from mass 2. If I were to add these, what I have to do is treat them like vectors. So I have to add them like vectors. So that would mean I would have to add them using the tip-to-tail rule or the parallelogram rule, whatever you want, but that would be F net. So what should you do if you have to find the net gravitational force? Well, first draw a free body diagram. So in this uh, example here, the mass big M, when uh, I draw, would draw a free body diagram, would have a force F1 and a force F2 acting on it. Then find the net force in the X direction and find the net force in the Y direction. If you have a force that's acting at an angle, you'd have to break it into components. And then find the magnitude of the net force. How would you do that? Well, if you know that the, uh, you have the F net in the X and the F net in the Y, you can take the square root of the squares added together of these things. You've seen this before when you're trying to find the magnitude of a vector. And then to find the direction of the net force, you can use the inverse tan of the net Y components divided by the net X components. And again, this formula should look somewhat familiar. By the way, this idea of adding up all the forces and treating them like vectors when you add them up, this is known as the principle of superposition.